Hello, miners. My name is Blue Ghost, and I would like to welcome you to Season 3 of Deep Rock Galactic, Plaguefall. Season 3 introduces us to a brand new objective, brand new seasonal events, brand new performance paths with cosmetics, and of course, an upgraded arsenal for each dwarf in the form of grenades. In today's video, we're going to be going over how to effectively combat against the infection known as rockpox. That's not only dangerous to you, but unfortunately is a grave danger to the whole entire ecosystem of hoxes. Let's go over the space rig first. You'll notice that when you come out of your cabin, you'll be sprayed by decontaminant. Of course, knowing an active infection is going around, management has placed these decontamination showers in sprays for your convenience. Going up to the mission terminal, you'll immediately notice that Hoxies is being swarmed by many meteorites. And simply by accessing the mission terminal, you will notice a large group of biomes that are covered in a red area. This area indicates a hot zone for the lithophage outbreak. Lithophage outbreak is, of course, a brand new warning that is introduced into Season 3. Successfully completing a mission with this warning active will grant you 50% increased rewards upon mission completion. If you haven't already picked up the seasonal assignment which gets you started on the lithophage outbreak, I would recommend go picking that up. Not only does it give you a lot of credits, but it does give you a hefty amount of performance pass points, which is definitely worth getting when you're starting out your performance pass. All right, we got the drop pod all warmed up, but before we go down into the hot zone, let's go ahead and discuss new items that have been added to your arsenal. Each class has been assigned one brand new throwable, which I highly recommend picking these up because these throwables are definitely worth it. For the scout, he comes equipped with the Voltaic Stun Sweeper. This boomerang will actively seek out any hostiles in range. It will rapidly chain target from target, dealing shock damage and stunning any glyphids that are caught in its path. The Voltaic Stun Sweeper's stun is very potent, and it also has the capabilities of stunning a Praetorian. You'll get about 8 of these to throw, so make sure you use them because it will provide a great utility for your team or even yourself if you're playing solo to get some breathing room. For the Driller, he's been given access to the Spring Load Ripper. This device, whenever planted on the ground, transforms into multiple spinning blades of death that'll slice through glyphids like no problem. The device will travel in a straight line on terrain, going up walls, ceilings, or anything else. This device can prove very potent when used in smaller tunnels so that it can infinitely loop around the walls of the tunnel. Though, do take care when you use it around teammates because you don't want somebody to lose a leg. No! Oh, no! I warned you! For the engineer, he gets access to the SSG. This is a device that contains five mini swarmer drones. And yes, they are a part of Rival Tech, but we reversed engineer them so that they can be on our side. The shredder drones will target a single target or multiple targets. These shredder drones are capable of dishing out serious damage to low rank glyphid grunts. Though, of course, they're not that potent against Praetorians, Oppressors, or Armored Grunt Guards. The Swarmer Drones do, without a doubt, at least provide great support against large enemy counts that are coming towards you. A cute feature about the Shredder Drones is that when no hostiles are nearby, they will follow you in such a cute manner to protect you. And finally, for the Gunner, he has access to the Lead Burster. This grenade, question mark, whenever planted on the ground, will unleash a heavy hailstorm of bullets in a large spherical area. And might I add, the satisfaction level of this grenade is very, very satisfying. It shreds through mecteras, grunts, and even a lot of glyphids on the ceilings in a matter of seconds. With your upgraded arsenal of grenades, let's go ahead and drop right into the action. As part of the Lithophage Outbreak, a brand new primary objective has been added on top of your current mission objective. Both of these will need to be completed in order for you to call the drop pod to return home. Infected areas can easily be identified via the terrain scanner. Search for red areas that stand out in front of the green areas that you normally see on the terrain scanner. When you discover a rockpox infection, you will notice a contagion spike infecting the area around it. Rockpox is, of course, very contagious to the touch, and you will need to do your best to keep contact with the infection to a minimum. That being said, there is also a brand new damage type being introduced into Season 3 called Infection. While this damage type doesn't exactly make you sick, it will still, of course, yield some very high health risks. Whenever your Infection progress bar gets to maximum, you will be entangled in Rockpox. From there, you will be constricted and unable to move as it slowly drains your health away. 
To effectively combat against rock pox, you will need to call in special cleaning utensils via a supply drop. Simply aim anywhere at the infected area, push the action button, and push the primary fire button to call down cleaning utensils. Once the cleaning pot has arrived, you will be supplied with four cleaning utensils that are categorized in the form of two lithovomers and two lithovax. The first step to cleaning the infection is of course applying lithofoam on any of the rock pox blisters. The blisters are of course the yellow protruding bubbles that are coming out of the infected area. Within the rock pox blisters, you will also notice some large worm eggs that are protruding out of the ground. If these worm eggs are left alone for way too long, they will eventually hatch and you will get swarmed by larvas. These rock pox lavas are very, very small, but they're not to be underestimated because they can infect you very quickly. Step number two. After applying the lithofoam on the rock pox blisters, you will then need to use a lithovac to vacuum up any of the lithofoam, and the area will immediately be cleansed as soon as the lithofoam gets vacuumed up. If you're playing solo, you can of course command Bosco to be your vacuum. A small but important victory against the rock pox. Keep it up. The infected area will immediately be disinfected if you clear enough of these rock pox blisters. You'll notice your progress on the left hand side of your screen where there is a health bar for the current contagion spike that you are working on. After completely depleting its health, the infected area becomes disinfected and you are free to walk around the area without risk of getting an infection. The amount of contagion spikes you need to clear depends on mission to mission, as it can go anywhere from between 1 or 6 contagion spikes required in order to complete this objective. The process of eliminating the rock pox in the area usually won't always be a straightforward task. For there are some nasty glyphids that await you in the infected areas. Rock pox have unfortunately infected glyphid grunts and glyphid praetorians. These versions of glyphids have different types of attacks and different types of behaviors. Rock pox infected glyphids will usually spawn near infected areas where the contagion spikes are. There is also of course chances of getting swarmed by rock pox infected vectors. Rockpox infected enemies will have blisters protruding from their bodies. The blisters will act as primary weak spots when fighting against these infected enemies. This is especially useful when fighting against Praetorians that are infected by Rockpox. Rockpox Praetorians have much higher defense stats compared to the conventional Praetorians. Successfully popping all the blisters on an infected enemy will instantly kill them. You can also use a lithofoamer to make them retreat for a short amount of duration. While handling this nasty infection, might I add, there might be something strange entering the planet's atmosphere. Alert! Meteor fragment headed your way. Clear the mark zone immediately. Introducing Season 3's brand new seasonal event called the Lithophage Meteorite. These meteorites can spawn in at any time during your normal mission operations. If one so happens to be appearing in your mission, Clear out the impact zone immediately, for the impact zone is quite large and it will instantaneously kill you if you don't clear out in time. Or even at least if you are far enough from it, then it does at least do some harm to you. The prize inside these meteorites are very, very wanted by R&D. We're going to need to extract these play cards before they start infecting the area around us. To crack open the meteorite, you will need rock crackers that are sent in by R&D. Simply walk up to the meteorite, hold down the action button, and call on the rock cracker supplies. Once they arrive, you will need to drag out the power cable to connect it to a jackhammer that will be attached to the meteorite, one on each side. Where you'll need to put the power cable is indicated by a blue holographic projection of a jackhammer that is on the meteorite. Once both the rock crackers are hooked up to the meteorite, you will then need to start up the jackhammers that are attached to the meteorite, and then you can begin cracking open the meteorite. This process is of course noisy work and it will be attracting enemies towards your location, so be ready to fight once you start the event. On top of fighting off enemies that are attempting to stop you from cracking open the meteorite, you will also be required to maintain and repair the rock crackers as they do their work. Bugs will swarm in and attack the rock crackers individually, and if both of these rock crackers go offline, you will need to restart them in order to continue the process, otherwise you will be stuck down here forever. Once this process completes, the meteorite will crack open and you can extract the play cards from what's inside the meteorite. Securing at least six play cards will earn you a script which is in tandem with the seasonal event for Season 3. Of course, do also take care when handling the play cards for they will cause infection the longer you hold them. And with that being said, you are now ready to play Season 3 of Deep Rock Galactic. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and as always, rock and stone.